G'day guys, welcome to this video. We'll get to this crossing of the Nullarbor into WA in a second, but now that I've had 5,000 Ks of, or almost 5,000 Ks of tow in the Sirocco Grande, there's some important things that I wanted to talk about, particularly around towing dynamics. The reason I say that this is really important is what's included in your car and your van is generally gonna be the most important things in your life. And when you go to a caravan show, you unfortunately don't get to test any of this until you actually make a purchase, hook it onto your car, and you drive away from the factory wherever you're picking your van up. So I think it's really important just to stop and talk about why I kind of think after almost 5,000 Ks of towing this Sirocco Grande, that I just wanted to point a few things out which has kind of made it, I think, one of the best, if not the best van that I've ever towed before. The first thing I want to talk about is the length of this drawbar. It feels longer than other vans that I've towed before and whilst it doesn't look like a hugely long drawbar, you've also got this really big toolbox here that's kind of obscuring your view to some of it. So we've pulled into some really tight camps, in particular at Esperance at the Caravan Park, the RAC, if anybody's ever been in there, packed in like sardines and it was a really tight landing. I had this at nearly full lock. Actually, I did have it at full lock a couple of times. And the drawbar is long enough to make sure that you're not gonna do any damage to the rear bumper of your car or to the toolboxes on your van. So feeling the dynamics as this has been towing along behind the car, I'm really, really happy with the length of this drawbar. Let's go and have a look at some other features as to why it's so good to tow. Other things that you're never going to see when you're at a caravan show, unfortunately, is some of the things that are sort of concealed underneath the van that impact the quality of your tow. So one of the things that Jawa does, and I love that they're, they're investing in the technology required to do this, is doing a laser wheel alignment before your van leaves the factory. So you know when you pick up your van that the wheels have been fully aligned, particularly some of the Chinese imports are synonymous for their wheel alignments being you know, epically out. So that's gonna obviously make this thing tow a whole lot better. Other things that Jara are doing in their 2024 range is including and actually packing at the factory before you leave uh, Koyo bearings, so quality Japanese bearings. Now, we've had experience with this in the past as well. We had Chinese bearings in our first Jawa when we left, did 10,000 Ks, and to be really honest, after we swapped them out for some Koyo bearings, they were in pretty good nick. However, knowing that and it's well known in the in the caravan land and in the trailer land that Koyo bearings are the utmost of quality. It's just another good peace of mind knowing that you're going to have a good solid set of bearings packed at the factory. Off-road uh, brake magnets is another thing that's being upgraded and included in all of the 2024 models. With more people going off-road and testing their vans and that sort of thing, Really good peace of mind knowing that those brake magnets are in there. You don't see them unless you're gonna pull the wheel and the hub off and those sorts of things, but really, really good to know. So a few more things when it comes to towing dynamics in this van that I really wanna point out. And for me, when you think about Jawa's market positioning at the moment and how they're looking to differentiate, everybody says that all of these hybrid vans are the same and they simply just aren't. So a thing that Jawa has been doing for a long time is investing in Lovell shock absorbers and springs. So when the vans arrive in Australia, they're straight into the workshop and Lovell's is one of the best known brands in Australia for quality, for endurance and for durability when it comes to off-road work. And underneath I'll show you some shots in a second of the beautiful layout of the Lovell uh, shock absorbers and springs. The last part that I really want to add in uh, around the towing dynamics of the Sirocco is just the layout. And what I mean by the layout is the way that all of the components of the pantry and the kitchen is counter offset by all of the storage boots on the other side of the van. And I did the ball weight just before we left sitting at 2.96 tonnes and it was sitting right on about 280 kilos. Anybody that's ever had a single axle van before knows that 
the dynamics need to be uh, really well laid out and your dis weight distribution needs to be done really thoughtfully to be able to achieve a nice solid bore weight like that. So again, underneath here, we've got the two big water tanks, 220 litre water tanks, positioned really cleverly directly either side of the axle. And so that also means that when you're traveling from one campsite to the next campsite, that you've got less to worry about, even if you've used half of one of the tanks or fully one of the tanks. So I've just got to give the weight distribution uh, and the thought that's gone into the overall layout a massive thumbs up. So you've heard a lot around towing dynamics here at the beginning of the video. Now let's join us and get across that Nullarbor. It was an epic crossing. Make sure you stay tuned to the uh, footage that we got at Bunder Cliffs, one of our favorite uh, destinations in Australia. We had to wait out the weather a couple of days, but I tell you what, it's epic. So let's get into this crossing. TPMS has just given us an indication that one of the tyres is down to 17 PSI on the van. So I'm hoping it's a false rating, but it may not be. That's not 17 PSI. That one's okay. How are we going? No, they're all good, mate. Oh, false rating. False rating, however, it shows how you can react in the moment uh, before you blow it out and before you do a rim. So happy to stop, uh, even though it was a false rating. Good times. Who's taking control of the Sirocco Grande? First time towing on a highway. Really? Yeah. Not even the old caravan? No, you never let me drive. Let's see if she can do 110. I'm not doing 100. <laughs> I didn't do 110. 95 to 100 if you can comfortably. It's nice to just have a little break when you're doing these big 11, 12, 13, 14 hour day drives. <laughs> just to, I, don't, I don't know how long we're going to drive for today. If I can get a couple of hours of downtime, I'll be right again. Go paddock out there. Yeah. What happened, maybe? I trust it to be me. A goat just ran out in front of me. Luckily, I saw it. It came up onto the road, hesitated, went back then turned around again and then at the last minute it just pelted across the road. Oh! She missed it by a good car length but uh, yeah, did have oh. a, a good uh, run in front of us. Alright, Mavo just made her first overtaking manoeuvre. She was a little bit nervous about it but we literally followed a guy for about 150 k's before we did. Um, just a call out, number one, he didn't have a UHF. I had it on scan. I was trying to call out to him and just make sure that 
he knew that we were there and that we were going to come around. The, the next thing, he was fluctuating every couple of kilometres by about 10, 15 kilometres an hour. And then when we went to overtake him, he actually accelerated as well. So uh, I just don't understand. I don't understand some people as to why they wouldn't be courteous to every other road user that's out there. Um, we're not impatient people, but when you're consistently up and down and up and down and up and down, he had a boat on his roof. He had a massive, big, full off-road van. Didn't have a UHF. Didn't have tow mirrors. Like. I don't get it. But anyway, I'm not trying to criticise, but common courtesy. Somebody just overtook her first road train. Um, unlike the caravan I was talking about earlier, that bloke was a legend. He actually called us up and just let us know that he'd all clear and he'd back off and let it go past. So, good job. See, people whinge about truck drivers, not the truck drivers. No, he was really polite. It was great. just spotted our first group of goats. I don't know what's a collective for goats, darling. I don't know. No a idea. shit ton, I'll look a it shit out. ton of goats. I'll look it out. I'm really not liking it. There's goats literally everywhere. It's it's actually, it's really scary and a pain in the ass. It's, you just gotta scan the road a bit more. Um, a lot more. The reason I think there's so many goats is because there's been so much inland rain this year. It's actually quite stunning to see this landscape's so green. Um, uh, I think we travelled it here extensively about 17 years ago, back when Australia was in drought and it was basically red and dead. <coughs> so um, it's at least been a really different contrast to see. Yeah. They hear you coming. <laughs> Old crackhead over here, look at us. I sniffed it the other day and it got up like the moisture in whatever it is that makes it sniff got into here and I couldn't like my eyes started watering. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh. quite good though. It is. If anybody sees that rocket fuel stuff being advertised on social media. It's the New Zealand. It's kind of, yeah, well that's from New Zealand. Um, it's kind of like rocket fuel. I'm sure everybody sniffed a mix before. But anyway, quite refreshing. It is day two of Mamie's driving lessons towing the Sirocco. Uh, it's currently 45 degrees outside. We've just gone through, what was it called? Klein something? KY. KY Jelly, we called it because KY was on the distance markers outside the town. Uh, we are 220 k's from Sejuna. And we're gonna to have to make a call at Sejuna as to whether we park there for a couple of days and throw a power cord into this van because it, it, if it's gonna be this hot for the next few days, I don't know whether camping on the Mulse Nullarbor is gonna be the smart move. Yeah. We've got lots of solar and we can run the air con, but it's gonna really, really, really struggle if it's 45 degrees ambient. So good to have choices. Um, cost us a few dollars, but to be honest, for a couple of days of air conditioning. Yeah, particularly, you know, with you doing some computer work. Yeah, I had a bit of work to do, so... Um, and I've got a YouTube to make. And you've got a YouTube to make for everybody, so you know. So you know, I've got to do it in some comfort. Good times. I'll be coming up to Wadena. It's got a dump point. 
So we need to yeah, empty baby's toilet. No, that looks like it's at the race course. Oh, so. I'm going to the race course. So. Right, where are we, we going? We made it to Sejuna. Yay! You want to We have made it past Sejuna and Penong and we're going on to a little secret uh, free camp off the main, off the Nullarbor I guess. We're not quite on the Nullarbor yet but you know what I mean. So that is the end of our first little stop near Penong. I can't, I think it's Bukabidi or something like that is the area. So it's about 80 k's uh, west of Sejuna. We've just wrapped up for the day. It's about six o'clock and we're gonna try and punch through to Bunda Cliffs, which is about two and a half, two and three quarter hours away. Where estimated time of arrival is 9 p.m. Funny thing is here in South Australia though, um, it gets dark really late. So we really enjoyed that little quiet camp. It's a great spot on the Nullarbor. Yeah. I just don't think that many people would use it because it's not that far from no Sejuna. And if you're coming from Sejuna, it's not really a long enough distance to, uh, in a day's drive to stop at. So it was a great one. If you're looking to bunker down on the Nullarbor for a little yeah, bit, that one was an excellent one. Keep it in mind, find it on Wiki Camps. Hard to see us. Yeah, hopefully you can see us. The sun's looking bright at us, so we might look like a beacon. Uh, we've decided we're going to stop in at Nullarbor Roadhouse for the night. It's now about 8.12 p.m. There's still a good hour's daylight, but just with the sun, we're driving west and we're looking straight into it. Just with the risk of animals coming out just as the sun's going down, I think the smart thing to do is to stop the night at the roadhouse and fill up with fuel. Might even be able to have a shower there because we've been off grid for a fair while. Uh, albeit that we've got a shower at the van, we're just conserving water. And uh, have, have a quiet little night. You can yeah. have a long shower. I'm going to wash my hair. Um, <laughs> and then we'll get up you know, early in the morning when the sun comes up and get moving onto Bundy Cliffs. I'm pretty sure it's only about an hour maximum from where we're going to be. Yeah but it's just a smart thing to do. There's no point of rushing when you don't need to rush. Bring That's you, right. Bring you the roadhouse in a second. Let's see how much they want for diesel. Oh. So we stopped at the Nullarbor Roadhouse last night with the intention of just having a really, really quick overnighter um, because the animals were coming out and we didn't want to be driving at that time of night. We've actually had an amazing experience here. First of all, when we were greeted, I was a little bit nervous because it was nearly closing time. With open arms, go and whack diesel in your car. Happy for you guys to stay here tonight. Then we find out that they've got a pub and they actually had meals and that sort of thing on as well. So given it was getting late, it was an amazing experience. There's showers here that are available here for the general public. So, you know, for a dollar coin, you can have five minutes of hot water. And when you're traveling the Nullarbor, particularly if you've been free camping, that can be really great because you've all got to conserve water. Secondly, it's a really quirky place. Like there's some amazing sort of artifacts and artworks and that sort of thing around here. There's a motel even. So if you're a little bit over being in a van or a rooftop tent or something like that, you can even grab a motel room. You've got your diesel, you've got your unleaded petrol and that sort of thing. So I've got to give 
the Nullarbor thumb, the Roadhouse a thumbs up. 30 bucks a night for power, and the people that run it are absolutely awesome. So I'll just do a quick walk around and show you what it looks like. Welcome to Ant's cooking lesson in the back of the Sirocco. Now, it's blowing a gale outside. It's just too windy to pull the kitchen out and cook out there. Uh, so we're on the Nullarbor, so everybody knows that's been on the Nullarbor that it's pretty windy. You may have seen us do this before, but we're gonna make some two minute noodles into a bit of a gourmet meal. So, just really quickly with this Sirocco, there is no inside cooking per se but we've got the internal sink here and we always carry an induction burner with us. And the beauty about the induction burner is with this Enerdrive one, two punch down here, 3000 watt inverter, 400 amp hours of lithium. We've basically got a portable power station. So using the induction burner is not even gonna make a dent in this battery. We also use it in the car as well. So the beauty about having the induction burner rather than the internal cooking is that we can take it from the van and put it in the car, particularly on days like this where it's really, really windy. Let's make maybe a beautiful noodle soup. Really, really quickly, we've got our veggies, so a bit of bok choy, a little bit of onion, bit of shiitake mushrooms and uh, some cherry tomatoes. And we've also got some dimmies. Everybody loves dim sims. So uh, I'm gonna turn this into a bit of a, not just two minute noodles, I'm gonna turn it into a bit of a meal. to Bundercliffs, uh, one of our favorite places from our last lap. We are probably about 20 k's away, would you reckon, maybe? Yeah, about that, just watching as we approach. I think we're about, about that, maybe 15 minutes, something like that. So talking to some of the locals at the Nullarbor Roadhouse, the word is that uh, they're starting to close a lot of the tracks down to Bundercliffs. Uh, they're also not giving out the camp permits like they were. So can still go in and have a look but there's no camping available there at the moment we're going to suss it out see whether we can get a permit but uh we'll go we'll go in there and if we can't then got to respect the um got to respect what the rangers and authorities want us to do um word is that it's like pretty much everywhere that's brilliant around australia people go and camp there and 95 percent of them do it great and then the five percent leave toilet paper and rubbish and stuff everywhere so that's kind of the insight also heard a little bit around obviously you're right on the great australian bite and the cliffs are starting to crack so we'll be extra cautious when we i'm sure with my boat yeah <laughs> we'll be extra cautious i told anyway. you it was a risk massive risk so i'm hoping that we can get some uh some footage of the cliffs but uh we'll just have to play it by ear and see what's uh the status when we get there yeah going to test out that Dometic DRS system. Let's see how much dust is in the van. Maybe cleaned it this morning, so hopefully, uh, hopefully there's yeah. no dust in it. We'd like Lucy back here. <laughs> Let's 
go check it out. I'm not so scared this time. I'm feeling good. Oh wow, listen to it. We have got the best weather you could ever ask for at Bunda Cliffs. No wind. Well, there's always wind, but very little wind, and it's crackingly beautiful. Oh look, someone Someone's had a here. little fire pit. Can't wait to bring you some more drone footage from this place. It's just magic. Oh wow. Listen to the ocean. So people sometimes question why you need big power in a van. We've obviously got a 3000 watt inverter in this Sirocco plus 400 amp hours of battery. So I've just jumped into the van, whacked the inverter on, I'll plug the Starlink in and we have absolutely no concerns around having the power to run everything even though we are completely and utterly in the middle of nowhere. So we've got ourselves online. The satellite will now try and align itself to the best view. There we go. Pointing slightly southwest, more southerly, but slightly southwest, which is where the track of the satellites run. Don't need to do anything. It calculates it and works it out itself. Pretty awesome. I'll give you a speed test in the photos. It's literally just calculated so it's going to get better and better as it gets more sort of data around the sky 200 megabytes down 37 megabytes up per second that is and a 32 millisecond latency like unbelievable look at that mobile workstation anywhere anywhere this little bench on the sirocco is perfect all right i hope you can see from here we've just done the mad dash there's a whole pod Whoa, I'm going to be careful that I don't fall off. I reckon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dolphins. I think they're dolphins. Whoa, right there. How awesome, what a great place. No place to camp. successfully made it through the Nullarbor for the second time going from east to west. It was really really cool just to stop at some different places this time and obviously Bunda Cliffs which we loved so much last time. Did it a little bit slower just because of the weather and those sorts of things to make sure that we got the perfect uh, day for footage and that sort of thing at Bunda Cliffs but what do you reckon maybe it was a pretty good crossing? So nice and good. Calm. Yeah it was. It was a good little crossing we had nice little breaks in between so it didn't feel like too much last time I feel it was like forever long so and there's heaps of cool places to camp along the Nullarbor guys you can stay at road houses you can stay at side of the road camps and it cost you nothing mm -hmm. um, we're about to turn down to Esperance and head south for about 200 kilometers so if you enjoyed this one make sure you give us a like and uh, a subscribe and 
any questions that come up around our travels or anything that we've talked about or any thoughts that you've got make sure you give it to us we love to hear from uh, people that follow us cheers guys see you in the next one